Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the OACAC Virtual College Exploration for all Ohio students. I have a few announcements for you before we get started. Our first announcement is, how do you ask questions during this presentation? Um, what you'll need to do is just click the Q&A button on your screen. You'll see a pop-up, and when you think of a question, you can type that question right into that Q&A box, and we'll get those answered toward the end of the presentation. Your camera and your microphones are off, so you'll be muted. You don't have to worry about those. The panelists are not able to see you or to hear you. If you're interested in signing up for more sessions or seeing what other sessions are available, you can sign up for those at www.oacac.org. Again, that's www.oacac. Dot org. And if by chance your connection isn't strong or you miss part of the presentation or you want to go back to hear a little bit more, recordings of this presentation will be available. All sessions will be recorded and available at www.oacac.org. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and you'll be joined by Patrick and he's going to give you a fantastic presentation. Take it away, Patrick. Thank you very much. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's one o'clock here on the East Coast. Uh, my name is Patrick Butler, and I'm an admissions counselor at Pennsylvania College of Technology. Uh, I'm actually broadcasting to you today from Washington, DC. Uh, it's a very unique time, of course, as you're probably aware in, uh, in this part of the world, that's for sure. Uh, so I'll go ahead and share my screen and get the presentation up on, on the video here. So here we go. Awesome. So um, as I mentioned, I, I work for Pennsylvania College of Technology, and our institution is located in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, so not terribly far from Ohio. Uh, we're in a part of Pennsylvania that's called North Central Pennsylvania, and uh, it's, a, it's a small town area um, surrounded by some big, beautiful mountains right along the Susquehanna River. But we're really all about students learning with their hands. And you can see right here on this title slide, uh, there's images of hands uh, getting, getting dirty, both physically and metaphorically. Um, and we really believe that learning by hand in your first semester is the best way for you to, to master your degree program. Um, all of our programs are extremely hands-on and we immerse you into your program, in particular in the lab environments during your first semester. We believe that you can really build your future by hand um, and become what we'd like to call our tomorrow makers. So I'm going to show you a quick little video clip about some of our programs as we get going into the presentation here. Any college can make you look good on paper. At Penn College, we're more into looking good on steel and looking good on x-rays with looking good in code with extra miles taken on airstrips and suspension bridges, building and rebuilding, vision and revisions, with perfect stitches and smiles, with making something that already looks good look even better. We look amazing on a plate, even if it's only for a minute. And when it's time to rest, we'll build a robot who can look good for us. And when it's all said and done, and made and seen, you'll look good to everyone. Because the past might be written on paper, but the future will be made by hand. All right, so. As you probably saw in that video, um, there are quite a lot of different degree programs that were highlighted. Um, what is, uh, I would say, the same about all those programs is the state-of-the-art labs and the approach to the hands-on technology uh, that we really take. Um, in our lab environments, you're going to find that all of the equipment and the experiences that you have are going to really mimic what you're going to see in the real world. Um, we really work really hard to make sure that our industry partners um, work with us to provide the same equipment that you're going to encounter when you go out into the workforce. 
in this photo example here on the slide, you're seeing some of our nursing students working in a very lifelike hospital setting, which is actually right on our campus. It's one of our simulation labs. And it's just an example, again, of how we prepare you so that when you step out into that work environment, you're really going to be able to succeed. And what that does for us is it helps drive our placement rate. So you can see on this slide, we, we have a 98% job placement rate. Um, it's an extremely high number. Um, it's one that you would be challenged to find at other colleges. Um, and that really is an testament to the amount of time our students spend in lab um, and the career preparation that we do with every student. Um, our 100 plus diverse majors, and we'll get into the specifics of what they are in just a minute here, um, but they are very industry focused. And what I mean by that is we have advisory boards that inform our curriculum and tell us what should be taught, what maybe shouldn't be taught or we should take out of the curriculum and what majors may not even apply anymore. Um, so we only wanna have curriculum that is relevant to today's marketplace and, and is gonna provide you the best opportunity to get a job. So we're constantly refreshing and fine tuning the curriculum to make sure that it's gonna give you the best experience and maximize the amount of money, of course, that you're gonna spend and the value you get in return. Uh, we have over 150 learning labs on campus. Um, you saw that image of the, the nursing lab there in the previous slide, um, but that model is the same across all of our different programs. Um, students will spend a lot of time in lab um, and we keep this, the class sizes relatively small, about 16 students in a class. And that's by design uh, to allow you to have a lot of face time with the faculty members, um, but also with each other. Learning in small groups and working in teams is a, as an integral part when you get out into the workforce. So across some of our other programs, um, we have our dental hygiene clinic. Um, it's a very, very recently renovated facility. It's actually open to the public and it's a place where you can actually go in as a student, even if you're not in the dental hygiene program and get your teeth clean for a very inexpensive fee. It's a real living learning lab for our dental hygiene students to get the experience that they need cleaning teeth. Uh, in our construction labs, this is where students are literally building their future. Um, they will fit out entire structures in this lab and, uh, and complete with all of the, the drywall and flooring and, and finishing and electrical work that you would see in a, in a structure when it's actually built. Um, it's a great, great experience for those students. We have an aviation maintenance program, which is at our adjacent aviation center to our campus, um, where students will actually learn all the ins and outs of not only working on airplane engines, but all the avionics that goes into airplanes um, and earn their industry certifications. We have a brewing and fermentation science program, which is what you see in the lower left there. Um, you have to be 21 years of age to pursue that particular program, um, but it is an offering that we have a very recent addition to the college. So it's just worth pointing out. Um, our culinary arts programs, which you can see the image of the two, um, two people with the, the chef hats on. Um, they work very closely with our on-campus French restaurant. Uh, we are fortunate to have a, a restaurant called Le Jeune Chef on our campus, and uh, which translated from French means the young chef. And uh, it's, a, it's another opportunity for our students to get real world experience working in an upscale restaurant, serving members of the public um, in, in a real unique way. So our college is organized into three academic schools uh, in the School of Business Arts and Sciences. That's where you're going to find programs like culinary arts technology, uh, also business administration, accounting, graphic arts, um, as well as emergency management and homeland security. In our engineering technology school, which is by far our largest school on campus, that's where you're going to find all of our construction technology programs like residential construction, uh, you're also going to find our HVAC program. You're going to find our automotive programs, our diesel technology and electric power generation programs, civil engineering, uh, of course, all things information technology. So if you're looking at computer science as a potential major, um, we would consider that as part of our, our information technology suite of programs. Um, majors like cybersecurity, Game and simulation design and software development are just a few of those examples. Um, and then finally in our School of Nursing and Health Sciences, that's where you're going to find all things health related. So uh, you're going to find nursing. You're, we have a physician assistant program. 
We have a surgical technology program. And as you saw on the previous slide, we have a dental hygiene program. Across all three of these academic schools, uh, we offer certificate degrees, associate degrees, bachelor's degrees, and in our nursing and health science school, we offer master's degrees. Uh, so the physician assistant program is actually a combined bachelor's master's program. So as a high school student, you can even come into that program and get a master's degree after five years. Um, we also just recently launched, uh, starting uh, this upcoming fall, a master's of science in nursing education. Um, if you're interested in the health career field, that's something to consider. Um, while there is a big nationwide shortage of nurses, there's an even larger shortage of nursing educators. So something to think about if you're looking into the health field. We do believe that learning should happen both inside and outside of the classroom. Many of our programs have a required internship component to them. For the ones that do not have a required internship, there is an optional internship. Um, because of our tight connection to industry, uh, there are a lot of opportunities to find internships. We hold a career fair on campus every fall, and we literally have employers coming in specifically to hire our students. Um, they really find that our students come with the right skills uh, to, to hit the ground running as soon as they graduate. These internships um, really do create a nice pathway to future employment. And that's a very common experience for a lot of our students. They will get hired sometimes even before they graduate from, uh, from their program. In our health science programs, clinical rotations is of course a very big part of it. Uh, our location in Williamsport, Pennsylvania uh, provides a lot of opportunity to get some varied experience in different hospital settings. We're not too far from a lot of major medical facilities. The photo on this slide is actually very, um, very unique. Uh, it sort of serves two purposes. One, you're seeing our paramedic students uh, doing some volunteer work, um, but the second is where they are. So they're actually volunteering at the Little League World Series. And that's an event that happens in Williamsport every year. Um, unfortunately, it didn't happen this year uh, due to COVID-19, but every August, right before school starts, uh, we are home to the Little League World Series, which is an international event that draws hundreds of thousands of people every year to our town, which is a really cool thing. So beyond learning uh, through internships and clinicals, um, there's also the opportunity for you to learn in another country. Uh, so we offer lots of different global experience opportunities. Uh, you may have heard of study abroad. So this is our, our version of study abroad. Uh, in this particular photo example, um, these are some students in one of our architecture courses that traveled over to uh, Europe to study some Roman architecture. Um, but some of our degree programs have specific global experience opportunities, such as our nursing students who have traveled to Guatemala, our uh, dental hygiene students have traveled to the Dominican Republic um, to provide healthcare in some of these settings. Students come back from these opportunities with a real newfound passion for their area of study, um, but also a real nice tight bond with their classmates. So it's an awesome opportunity that I would encourage you to do regardless of what school you decide to go to. Um, we offer both short and long-term global experience opportunities. So a short-term opportunity is where you only go for a week or two. A long-term opportunity is where you go for an entire semester. So that's a, a true semester exchange program. Um, so lots of different options for you to get out of the country a little bit and experience uh, you know, learning in a, in a whole new and interesting way. So at Pennsylvania College of Technology, you know, we are a traditional college and we offer um, all of the things that you would find um, at, a, at a regular university or college. We do have on-campus housing. Uh, we have, the housing is, is extremely modern, I'll say. Uh, it's all air conditioned, which sounds trivial to say, but uh, it's not the case at all schools. Uh, we also allow all of our first year students to park a car on campus. So if you're coming from afar and you wanna drive and park on campus, you're absolutely welcome to do so. We try to keep the campus very vibrant and alive. Um, our unique location in North Central Pennsylvania makes it very convenient to experience the great outdoors. So you'll see an image here on the screen of uh, one of our students kayaking. Uh, our campus is located right along the Susquehanna River. So there's lots of options for you to get out on the water. Um, or get up into the mountains, whether it's hiking, camping, fishing, or hunting. 
all of those are, are easy activities to do. But the campus itself is also a natural place for you to socialize and make friends. Our campus center building, uh, which you'll see an image in the lower left there, students playing pool, um, is really the hub of all things social activity. Um, that's where student organizations will meet. That's where you have plenty of room to, to hang out and relax in between classes or just take a, take a breather. Uh, that's also where you'll find one of our dining units that you can uh, enjoy a meal in between classes. It's important to also point out that we are an NCAA Division III school. Uh, so we do have 16 intercollegiate athletic teams, um, as well as a myriad of club and intramural act athletics. Uh, as far as our intercollegiate athletics is concerned, you'll see, of course, we have women's soccer. Um, but we also just added this year men's lacrosse as a new sport. And we recently added esports to our portfolio. Beyond those sports, we do have men's and women's basketball. We have cross country. We have golf. And we even have an, an interesting one called archery, which uh, I'm sure you've heard of archery before, but it's not a super common sport you find at most colleges. Um, a unique aspect of our archery program is we've produced multiple All-American archers um, and they've traveled internationally to win uh, major competitions. If intercollegiate athletics is not really your thing, um, intramurals is by far the most popular thing for students to get involved in on campus. Um, over a third of our students to participate in some form of intramural athletics. So there's definitely things to do to keep you moving when you're here on campus. But maybe athletics isn't your thing. Well, we have over 65 student organizations for you to choose from. And these really range from social organizations like fraternities and sororities to special interest groups and community-based organizations. So a special interest group could be our automotive, um, excuse me, our motorsports association or our Baja team that builds a race car every year and races it at one of our, our racetracks that's nearby. Um, these are great opportunities, again, to make Penn College your home and build a strong connection with your classmates or maybe with someone that's not even in your program. Um, we really want you to feel at home when you're on our campus and connected to, uh, to everyone around you. You know, we're not a huge school. We have about 5,000 students. So it's, uh, you know, it's big enough to be you know, big, but, but small enough for you to make friends. So as I mentioned earlier, Williamsport, Pennsylvania is where our college is located, uh, home to the Little League World Series. Um, we do have a pretty bustling little downtown about a mile away from our main campus. Um, as I talked about earlier, you can bring a car if you would like, but it's not required. Uh, there is a city bus system that runs throughout the city, and you get to ride it for free as a student with your student ID card. The downtown is full of shops and restaurants, coffee shops, um, as well as a, a large performing arts venue, a movie theater, uh, as well as a big sports complex with bowling alley and all kinds of indoor sports uh, activities to do. Uh, the Susquehanna River, which I talked about earlier a little bit, has a trail that runs right alongside it. So if biking is your thing or, or hiking and running, uh, those opportunities are, are abound for you right here in Williamsport. The town itself is located about three hours away from Philadelphia. Um, I'm in D.C., as I mentioned in the beginning. Um, it's about four hours from D.C. to get up to Williamsport. So we're not too far from some of those other major metros if you did want to explore some other parts of uh, of Pennsylvania or of this side of the country. So let's talk a little bit about our students, um, who they are, where they come from, and what they're studying. So this slide gives you a little breakdown of our student makeup. Uh, most of our students do study full time. Uh, and we found over the recent uh, survey time that uh, our students mostly are pursuing bachelor's degrees. We have a fair amount of students studying two year associate degrees and certificate programs. It's important to note that we do offer uh, a parent bachelor degree for every associate's degree. So if you were to come to Pennsylvania College of Technology and pursue an associate's degree, it's very easy to transition from an associate's degree to a bachelor's degree. Um, it's not like you would have to repeat a bunch of coursework. Um, so just something to think about when you're looking at schools. Our geographic distribution, you know, it's very clear on this graph that most of our students do come from North Central Pennsylvania, um, but we are drawing a population from outside of the state as well. Um, not only outside of the state, but internationally. 
Um, I also work with our international students, and I'm proud to say that we've got six international countries represented on campus this year, um, which is quite a feat, uh, considering the, the situation going on with COVID-19. Our largest program areas um, right now is information technology. Uh, it tops the, the list with the number of students, um, followed up by nursing. Um, I mentioned earlier that there's a huge demand for nurses and nursing educators, and that's well evident by the students that are, are trying to enroll in our programs. Um, so again, this is a good breakdown of all of our different programs by, by their size. Welding and management um, are also high on the list. It's probably good to mention that our, our welding program recently was uh, had a huge renovation to their facilities. A 55,000 square foot lab was opened and uh, it is by far an amazing, amazing facility. Our students are, are learning state-of-the-art techniques um, with some of the latest and greatest technology in that industry. So let's talk a little bit about one of our students. Uh, this is Kate Ruggiero. Kate is actually one of our presidential student ambassadors, which means she works with our uh, admissions office, giving tours and uh, helping you know, provide that student perspective. Uh, Kate is actually one of our aviation maintenance technology students, which is a pretty cool major. I, I recently had the opportunity to go tour the facility that she's working in, and it's really amazing what these students do. Um, but Kate also was recently the recipient of a scholarship to go attend a conference um, to network with other women in aviation. Uh, she's also a very involved student on campus by participating in the Wildcat Events Board, which is an organization that helps plan events on, uh, on campus for other students to participate in. Uh, so she's, she's doing great things and uh, she's working even on some special projects uh, at the Aviation Center right now. And uh, we're really proud of what she's accomplished. And we, we can already see that her career is, is well, well uh, taking flight to say the least. But Kate's not the only success story. You know, our alumni have gone on to do some pretty amazing things. Um, Kate, uh, excuse me, Kate, Christina, uh, who you'll see in the first, uh, First photo there. Uh, she was a CHOP champion on the Food Network and one of our culinary arts students. Um, I had the fortunate opportunity when I studied at Penn College to go to school with Matt Staub, who now works at Google, um, which is not a surprise knowing who he is. Um, you know, Jessica is another student that I went to school with at Once Upon a Time and is a, a creative manager now for uh, a competitive sports team. Uh, we have students working at Amazon, as well as working at uh, UPNC Medical Center. So, you know, you can see right from this slide that our students are going on to do some pretty awesome things. And this is really just a small slice of uh, places that our students have gone on to work. So how can you become featured on that slide? Uh, well, to do that, you would need to follow our three-step admissions process. Um, and it starts with completing an application. So, at Penn College, we practice what's called open enrolling admissions. Um, so that means that as long as you complete these three steps, we will uh, admit you to the institution. The application is free. There's no charge to apply. You can complete the application in one of two ways. One is by filling out the Common App and just picking us as one of your schools. The other is to complete an institutional application, which is just the application that's available on our website at pct.edu. After you submit the application, then you have to submit your materials. As a high school student, that generally just means we need a copy of your high school transcript. But if you've taken the SAT, the ACT, or maybe you've taken courses at a community college or another school before, excuse me, after high school, we would like to get a copy of those scores and transcripts as well, because those can help you with step number three. Step number three is meeting placement requirements. Meeting placement requirements means that you've demonstrated to us that you're proficient in English and math for the major you've selected. Because we have over 100 different degree programs, math and English is going to vary as far as the requirements are concerned by the different majors. So we assess you on your math and English level uh, as you come into the college. If you've taken the SAT or ACT, or you've taken some courses at another college, you can transfer those courses to us or use those test scores to demonstrate your readiness and meet your placement requirements. If you've not taken those courses, or let's say you didn't take the SAT or ACT, that's completely fine. We are a test optional school. 
you are able to then take our own placement test. It's a free test that we offer. It's available online uh, or in person. You can come to our campus and take it in, in our testing lab. And again, it's just an assessment of your English and math skills. If we find that your English and math skills aren't exactly where they need to be, we'll work with you to schedule an additional math class or remediation strategy to get you where you need to be. Once you've met these three steps, then you officially will become a Penn College Wildcat. So I really invite you to come visit us. Uh, despite the current conditions, we are open uh, for in-person instruction, and we're also open for in-person tours. You're able to schedule tours, uh, both physical and virtual tours, uh, on our website at pct.edu slash visit. Uh, you're able to self-schedule an appointment with your admissions counselor. So if you're a high school student in Ohio, then I would be your admissions counselor and you're able to self-schedule an appointment with me. Uh, on our visit page, we've got Saturday academic tour options um, as well as weekday tour options. So depending on what your needs are, uh, we understand that not everybody can come to campus during the week we are offering up Saturday options for you to come and tour our, our labs. These are great opportunities to get under the hood, uh, metaphorically and physically for some of our programs and get deep dive conversations going with our faculty um, as well as the admissions staff to make sure and, and, and determine if Penn College is the right fit for you. If you're not sure what you wanna study or you're still just kind of thinking about us as a potential college, a general campus tour might be the right option for you. It's a little more of a survey tour where you're going to get the lay of the land uh, and get a feel for what our campus is like without the lab tour specific option. And finally, there are countless virtual events happening uh, ongoing. COVID-19 provided us a really good opportunity to film a lot of virtual tours, but we're also hosting live Q&As and virtual sessions on an ongoing basis. So I really invite you to check out pct.edu slash visit to find the right option for you. As I mentioned before, if you're a high school student in Ohio, I would be your admissions counselor, but in the off chance that maybe you're a transfer student or you've taken some courses at another school, um, you'll wanna connect with one of our transfer counselors. So it's best to visit our admissions counselor page at pct.edu slash admissions slash staff to find out who your counselor actually is. So that concludes the presentation portion. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here in a moment and open it up for any questions that may have uh, come up. And just as a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, there is a Q&A button uh, on your screen. If you click on that, that'll get your question over to me. And I'll be able to answer it for you live. I don't believe I have the ability to post any chat messages, um, but I'll give you my email address as well, just so you have uh, a takeaway with you in case you do have a, a question that maybe you think about after you leave today's session. Um, it's pbutler, P-B-U-T-L-E-R, at pct.edu. I'll say it one more time, it's P as in Patrick, Butler as in my last name, B-U-T-L-E-R, at PCT, which just stands for Pennsylvania College of Technology, dot E-D-U. And you're welcome to send me an email. Um, I, I love answering student questions. Um, you can also connect with me on my personal uh, Penn College webpage, which is pct.edu slash Patrick. Um, there you'll find ways that you can schedule an appointment with me, uh, as well as um, as, as well as uh, send me a text message uh, or even find my phone number on there as well. Uh, so we have a question that came in. Uh, this recording will be available uh, that you can share with your students. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and StriveScan will make those available um, in, in the upcoming weeks here. Very good question. Just hang out for another minute or two. As I said before, um, 
you know, we highly encourage you to come visit our campus. Um, we're not too far away from Ohio. So check out that pct.edu slash visit page for all the ways that you can connect with us both virtually and physically. Um, we'd love to get you out to our campus to, to have a tour. Um, seeing our facility is definitely the best way to uh, see if it's a good fit for you. So definitely encourage you to come see us. Okay, well, I'll make one final call for any questions. And if there are none, then I will say that is a wrap. Uh, again, I want to thank you for attending the session today. And uh, I think I'll kick it back over to our facilitator for any wrap up that uh, she may have. Thank you, Patrick. Great presentation. Uh, just a few things to note. Um, after you close the window today uh, for this session, there'll be a very quick four question survey that would that will appear. So please go ahead and take a second to fill that out. Also, um, as I mentioned before, please sign up for more sessions that you're interested in. You can check out our schedule at www.oacac.org. And then again, we did have a question about this. Recordings will be available. So all sessions are being recorded and they will be available at www.oacac.org. Again, that's www.oacac.org. And we thank you very much for joining our presentation today. Thanks and have a wonderful afternoon.